Uh, what happened, Marshall? No! Hello, hello, welcome back to... Uh, what is this series again? I think it's called How I Met Your Mother, Timeline 0x00. What a strange name, right? I know, right? Um, anyway, you see how sometimes they are idling? I am gonna plan them a gym. So if they have nothing to do, give me some wheels. Whenever they have nothing to do, they will come here and run the wheels. And I would like to get some smart batteries right here as well. So that we can control these wheels to be turned on or off and some kind of um, additional logic to this as well. But I think I need a bit more um, refined metal to be able to produce these smart batteries. Um, so today I'm thinking, one, I want to build the gym. With the gym, right, I also want to build that, um, that main power line I talked about. And then hooking up the power generators into the power line and have some, let's see, have some sort of power consumer modules built so I can split the grid into say one kilowatts or two kilowatts line and I know for sure they wouldn't burn out. That's another thing, gym, power line upgrade, plus I want to dig more um, of this slime bile, like the entirety of this whole slime bile. Yeah, let me work on this and I'll get back to you guys soon. So I'm building my gym, right? And then I changed my mind. I want to bring them one floor lower so that I have this row sort of empty. I want to make that like a main room um, in this playthrough. And this would be like the main storage room. Uh, we will get to that later. And while I was um, looking at the mushrooms, I was like, why are these like waiting for slime? They should be automatically fed, right? I found a design flaw in my slime farm, which is if you look at the range of this auto sweeper, it cannot access all these three tiles. That's why I added this second row. But now I need to figure out a smart way to uh, transport slime from right here to right there. And you know what? Since I have the rails, right, what I can do is, let's see, I want to cut it off right here and connect this up. Now, let's say if I disable mushroom, but if we say we want slime and, oh, okay. So, if we own, if we enable it, it will constantly feed, like the Ultra Sweeper will constantly feed our conveyor loader slime, right? But if I set this to nice, manual use only, it wouldn't. That's super nice, okay. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. So now I'm transporting slime upstairs and cool. So with 999 slime, I think that should be more than enough. Let's turn back on this, turn it off with sweep only and let's double check. I think, right? Mm. Let's revert this back. I think whenever there is slime coming, we could also have it go upstairs. Now, I don't need anyone to access this anymore. And once they clean out the sandstone, I can re-enable this conveyor loader because right now I disabled it. I thought, yeah, let's do sweep only for now. So they wouldn't accidentally move the slimes from here to over here. Cool. Awesome. Oh boy. 
This is tricky to explain. You might be wondering, Nicholas, why are there so many battery modules? And what the heck is this? I know, right? Let's just go through the uh, researches first. Oh yeah, we researched like the advanced um, ranching technologies as well. Animal control, yeah. And we have researched artistic expression as well. And hopefully that will fix. It's not raw. Nice. Good egg. Ooh, hatch a new critter morph from an egg. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I was saying, uh, hopefully this, right, will help. But, uh, res let's zoom out a little bit and look into the room. Overlay. This is still a mess hole rather than being a great hole. Even though, right, it has 32 tiles and it has crown molding, which this is plus 20. Hmm, I'm seriously wondering why is this maybe just missing one block? What I could do is do that and see how it goes. But coming back to this monstrosity, I love monstrosities. Um, I also love like, there's a Minecraft YouTuber called Ethel, and then um, Hermitcraft season seven, he built a base called Monstrosity. Yeah, that's awesome. That's just an awesome base. Anywho, let's get back to this. Um, so, what the heck is this, right? You might be wondering. Um, even though this, these three modules, they look exactly the same. However, they have different purposes. Well, they have two types of different purposes. First of all, this is a charging module or power generation module. This one is a power consumer module. You can think this, these two acting as interfaces. So um, there's a few rules when it comes to electricity in oxygen not included. One rule is that if you have only batteries and generators on one side of the um, electricity network, there will be no burnouts happening at all. Okay, that's the first rule. The second rule is that if you have any kind of um, electricity consumer, for example, our electric grill, right? Once, let's see, how much power are we drawing? We're drawing about 360 to 40 watts, right? Right now. This is not going over the 1000 watts limit. If it does go over, um, these wires and bridges would start to burn out. And that's a bad thing, which we do not want to have. I just noticed something. Right. So. If you look at here, right, um, this is our, this purple line is our main grid. And everything, like all the power generators, including these um, coal generators, they are plugged into our main line. Ooh, yes, that makes sense. And they are powered into the main line, but if you look at the automation overlay, they are only controlled by their own charging module. This one is not plugged in for some other reasons, but just imagine this is a regular setup. Um, these two batteries and their thresholds, right, controls when do our coal generator kicks in. And these kicks in whenever the whole electricity networks batteries drop below 35 and it stops when everything at least connected is over 65. Now we should see, um, let's see what's happening here, right? So none of this is um, connected, but you see this battery being powered that's because all these manual generators are connected into the same network, the main grid as well. So they can charge all the batteries on the main grid. And because if we look into the priority system, this is a really low priority. So if they have something to do, say I want to build all that. Oh, I need something else to control that. 
no, stop. Yeah, that reminds me, I need to give them a mechanism so they can check, should I be doing this at all? And that comes from a timer sensor, which is really handy. Let them build that first. So you can use a timer sensor to turn this on and off like periodically so they can check their other tasks so they wouldn't be stuck on the wheel until everything is full. And back to what we were saying. Okie dokie, come on. You guys got this. Nice. So I want green to be about, how about 15 seconds? And I want the red. Why can't I get into the red? Being 0 0.1 seconds. So if they have things to do and the batteries, they're sort of fully charged, then they will go do something else. But if the batteries needs charging, say I have that, I want them to build that. Mmm, it's just art, isn't it? Yeah, so see, they wouldn't come here and charge the batteries. Oops, someone got stuck. But if they have nothing else to do and the batteries needs charging, they will come here and run the wheels. However, there are also times I just want them to run the wheels. Um, if the batteries, they are over certain percentages. Um, there is a trick I think I can do with how I can disconnect um, these, um, these manual generators from the whole network and then plug in, let's say, if we put some ceiling lights up here, up here, and probably up there. Yeah, I will get that down and get back to you. So yeah, that's, that's the basics of the power network. What it achieves is that one, your generators, your batteries, they are on the main grid, they are separated from the consumer grids. And if we look at here, right, this purple line this is the main grid. And you can see that the potential load is zero watts. But this white line, um, this is like our consumer grid, our first consumer grid, which is powering almost everything in our current base. And it is doing a good enough job so we don't have to worry about it being burned out. But in the future, um, this, this consumer grid, this power, right, is coming from this module. If we need more capability or more deliverable watts on the consumer network, we can just add one of this module, start another consumer grid. Yeah, I hope, I really hope that's a good enough explanation and um, I didn't mess your head around or anything like that. Cool, cool. Um, I will see you soon. Ooh, did you see that? Did you see how this battery got fully charged and then it disengaged this power switch, this power shut off? That means right now, um, all the generators and the lights, they're on their own grid. So um, these manual generators would always require someone to run them because they feel like, oh, we're not generating enough power. We need more power so we can power everything on the network. And because there is no battery, so whatever they generate is sort of wasted. Yeah, um, but that's sort of the essence, like the core idea of a gym. You want it to be run as much as it can. So, because when they run in the gym, right, they actually level up their, um, what is that? Ah, right. They actually level up their athletics so they can run faster. If you wear Atmos suit, right, there's a debuff, which is minus six athletics and they become really slow in animal suit. So this is why we want them to train up their athletics. But at the same time, right, we want them to charge up all the batteries as well. Yeah. 
Isn't that cool? In almost every oxygen not included gameplay I have, I always like to build this. This is like a sort of free uh, storage space. So you don't need to build all those uh, storage boxes. And um, what you do is one, it needs some water. Two, it needs to be like a two block high space. The reason for that is this is going to be really bad for the decorations, but that decoration does not, like that debuff of decoration does not pass two block tall. So that's why there is a two block tall hole. The reason why I like to put weight plate is just because I love to see like, oh my God, it's just so, so much stuff on these two blocks. And you're wondering like, why are they not breaking already? Right? That's just insane. And yeah, I have issued a big, big cleanup command. So I hope after this, um, everything everywhere will be, it will be clean of clutter. Right? That's the ultimate goal for this uh, cleanup. And afterwards, things should be much easier. Hmm. Gotta say, the weather is a bit weird outside right now. It's um, sunny, like I can see sunlight hitting in my living room. But however, um, it's also raining. It's just so weird. Anyway, we have found someone perfect. Nails. Nails, she's really good at ranching. She's also a grease monkey. She likes machineries. She can also do construction. She can't do digging, which isn't much of a deal. Like a breaker breaker, right? Now we just need to find her the perfect name. Hmm. Well, I actually have someone in my mind and Nails, you are going to be the lovely Victoria. Yes. Okay. Oh, I think that's how you spell her name, right? Let's go. Nice. Do we have enough beds? Um, let's do that. Ooh, uh, nope. Okay, that is unassigned, which is good. Even though they look like they have some kind of owners. And let's just go through the usual stuff. Schedule. Hmm, you're gonna join Ted, Victoria. You guys are gonna have a great time together. Hmm, Victoria, you are gonna do a lot of ranching. Yes, um, some building, maybe. Yeah, but other than that, that looks good to me for now. Cool, awesome. Welcome to the team, Victoria. Let's see, this is your bed. Nice. Awesome. Hello, hello. I just wanted to show you something quick. One is that's a gym working perfectly. They are almost always running on the wheels unless they have something else they need to do. Otherwise, they'll just stay here. The other thing is if we come here, right, we look at the fish. Look how many fish there are. They just stack together. And if we go into the room over there, right? We have 52, 51, ooh, 52 uh, critters inside this room. This is kept at 20 because that's what we set, right? And in here, there are 11 more like eggs waiting to be hatched. Wow. You can imagine like if you have enough food to feed them, Ooh, how many fish you're gonna have and then how much cooked seafood you're gonna have, right? That's that. And um, I was a bit worried about our coal storage, like um, the amount of coal we have, right? So I have this place ducked out as well. Other than that, um, maybe this part changed a little bit as well. I'm not entirely sure what exactly changed. I don't think I changed too many things. Mostly I was just letting the game run by itself and then periodically checking whether there's anything terribly wrong. 
and checking how many athletics points they have right now. I intend to keep this running until they hit athletics 20, I think. And after that, we can stuff some of them in this mini base and then have them dig out the whole slime biome over here. Yeah, cool, cool. I forgot to explain. Uh, the other benefit of having all the manual generators is that we don't use much of our code generators anymore. You can look into the stats, right? For these code generators, they haven't been online for at least the last five cycles. I have been watching my coast supply, right? It has been at 14 ton for a while. And something else I forgot to mention is that these crazy ass um, conveyor rails. I was trying to optimize how my duplicate can get all the stuff from here and move them up over here. So I opened up this channel and then extended the fire pole so they can get down quickly. Another thing I did is I like I um, put a conveyor loader right here. And so you can also allow manual use. I'm gonna turn this off now in case, you know, just, just in case. Don't leave things turned on, right? If you don't need them. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to like put stuff into the conveyor loader and then conveyor loader would send it off. And then following in this line, landing our storage system, which is pretty nice. The other line, like this one, this one comes on, comes from our fish farm. And then um, whenever we have food, right? Any kind of um, edible food. Um, yeah, right now it's just Paku because there's only fish and, oh yeah, here's one. This is a Paku and it's being shipped from our fish farm to our kitchen and anything cooked will go from our kitchen all the way up to our mess hall. We have refrigerators over there as well. I might devise something better than this because the problem with these fridges is that if you look into one of them, right? And if you look at fried mushroom, it says normal atmosphere, minus 4%. So it's getting less and less fresh. But if you store them in carbon dioxide environment, they will say this is a sterile environment so they wouldn't get like they wouldn't get that minus four percent um debuff they do get worse but it's at a slower rate particularly for mushrooms it will only be a minus three percent because it is refrigerated um but right now it's at minus six percent yeah Oh wow, how time flies. Right now it's 163 cycles on this world called How I Met Your Mother. That's an awesome name, awesome, yeah. And I was looking at the uh, stats, for example. <laughs> for example, um, wow, we have 96 fishes in this. 96 fish? Fishes? 96. Anyway, 96 fish in this um, um, room, right? And we still have 20 in the seating chamber because that's what we required. We asked for the game to do that, right? And there's 13 eggs being hatched, being incubated. And they have been running pretty consistently because I can see that my coal didn't, win, didn't go down, but somehow it went up. H how? What? Oh, right. I know why. Because some of the hatch, they must have ate something they shouldn't be. That's why. I didn't do any digging, right? Another thing is, if we look into the skills, um, some of the OG people, they're almost uh, athletics 20, right? 15. But the newer they become, the slower the athletics, they sort of grow because they're missing um, all that sort of time. You need time to do all that. And yeah, uh, but something, something got me a little bit worried. If you look right here, right? Algae, 
uh, last time it was at around I think 14 ton or 11 ton ish but now it's only 7.3 ton um, if you don't know algae we use that to generate oxygen and since this game is called oxygen not included oxygen is very important right the generation I have a few ideas of how we can generate more oxygen not using algae um, one way is that we have water uh, we have a huge water tank right here we have some this is like an infinite source of water right here as well another thing is we have loads of polluted water pockets what you can do is with polluted water you can use deodorizer to deodorize polluted oxygen that the polluted water off gas and then turn them into clean oxygen there is there is, is even there is even a way where you can use a plant because um, some plants like body bud they give off this uh, floral scent which is considered a germ once you have floral scent as a germ in the air right even if um, there's polluted water off gassing polluted oxygen um, I think the floral scent would override that uh, slime lump germ so there might be some really cool really interesting and really innovative ways we can explore very soon to how we can sort of generate a um, not really long-term long-term oxygen but at least in the midterm, we wouldn't be worrying about our algae consumption anymore. Yeah. Uh, what happened, Marshall? No! Why are you stuck here? Oh. <sighs> anyway, so I was building the giant polluted water tank. It was going very well. Like all that polluted water, they all end up here. And I have a solid wall to contain them, right? And I thought, hmm, there's that pocket of polluted water. I should open it up. And I did open it up. And before I open it up, right, I sealed this up because I don't want the polluted water to come down right here. Oh, this is going to be so tricky. But before we check this out, hopefully we can solve this in time. I have started a new system where Marshall, Lily, Ted and Barney, they, they are locked inside. They cannot go out. Only Robin can travel both ways. Victoria cannot come in. Why Robin can come in this way? Because she has to deliver all the food every day. Because, you know, none of these people, they can get out. They are locked in to work inside this uh, tiny, tiny space. But the benefit is they don't have to go out. Hmm. It's not that far, actually. Did I just over-optimize? Eh, I had a space. I had this set up already, so not too much trouble. I like it, actually. This is like a, what you call it, like an advanced base. So you can always have a main base and then have some satellite base. And whenever you're exploring, you can just stuff, like stuff all your employees, stuff all your duplicates in that area. Say, if I'm going to explore this area later, right, I might just open up another, oh, I just use this one, right? It's not that far away. Why am I over-optimizing? I don't know. But hey, this is a fun experience. I really enjoyed it. And let's get back to Marshall. What can we do to help you get out of here ASAP? We can destroy that. But can you climb up a too tall wall? I guess we have to see, right? Oh, okay. Everyone, come help. Oh, how about this one as well? Oh, finally, Marshall is saved. We cannot not have him Marshall 
in this playthrough. He's like a core part of our crew, right? Of our world. Oh, okie dokie. Now I can go relax a little bit more. Oh. They worked so hard, right? They, they are really stressed. Um, Lily is stressed to 55% and Ted is about 51%. So I feel like I feel really bad about that. So I built them quite a few massage tables. I think if you look into the room overlay, oh, this is not a massage clinic yet. Hmm, let us make it be. Yeah, let's just build that. And hopefully we can turn it into a massage clinic. I was gonna say parlor, but um, yeah. <laughs> it's a clinic. Yes, very clinical. Hmm, let's see, does it make it? Oh yes, it's pinky. I said it's, I said it's pinky. Yeah, pink. Hmm, it's really hard to pronounce, to enunciate very appropriately. And here we have all of them enjoying a massage all together. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny. Ooh, is Robin joining us? Hey, Robin, I heard you are really stressed out. How about this? Um, would you like to come? Come here. Join them. I mean, this is the core crew of How I Met Your Mother, right? So they should all enjoy this together. Ah, oh, such a nice scene. And I have noticed, just noticed that the massage table, like the, the hand, it's like a thumbs up. So cool. This might look something really strange, right? You might be asking, what the heck is this, Nicholas? Well, there are multiple layers to it. Oh no, don't get rid of my water, please. Right, let's have a look at the material overlays. Uh, first thing is that the gas overlay. So all these black blocks, they are carbon dioxide, right? Including this layer. This was a user mistake. But this is like, huh, what is here? Vacuum? No, it's just a layer of water. And all that is polluted water. And we have some deodorizers on top of that layer of water residing inside the mesh tiles. So, what does this do? Or, let's ask this question first. What does this pump do? And why can it pump out gas when um, gas vent overpressure at 2 kilos? See, overpressure 2 kilo, and the atmosphere around it is already 2 kilo. See that water? That water is tricking the game to think, oh, the environment atmosphere is less than two kilo, so I can output gas. Exactly. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Now, why is this gas pump here? Because if you look, right, a gas pump, no, not only it can um, vacuum the space um, right on the left bottom corner of the gas pump, but also the four blocks adjacent to that block as well. You see that blinking white block? And um, didn't I say, if we go back to the gas overlay, uh, the carbon dioxide is a user error. That is because we don't want carbon dioxide. We want a lot of polluted oxygen. And to get rid of the carbon dioxide, this, I think, is the best way that I can come up with. Hopefully, after a while, right, all this carbon dioxide would just be gotten rid of. And, um, yeah, because when we started, it was two kilos per block, but, and we didn't have any polluted oxygen uh, beneath it either. But at least now, right, it is... Um, uh, vacuum up, vacuuming up all the carbon dioxide and also the polluted oxygen as well. Hopefully we can get rid of it quick enough. 
Yeah. And maybe when we turn on this whole machine, I'll explain more. How does this generate oxygen? And how does it generate um, what you call it? Germ-free oxygen. If you look here, right, the outside is all slime germ. But if you look inside, it's either zero surface germ or it's fluorescent. So all the air we get out, it will have that fluorescent germ. If you still remember, right, fluorescent is a germ and it overrides slime lung germ. Yeah, that's just so cool. I love this game. So many details. You can get so technical in this game. Yeah. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. It's the last carbon dioxide block. Please get rid of it, please. Oh, yes, awesome. Cool. So I have turned this system on and I have left it to run for quite a while. And now we have 5.5 kilos of uh, oxygen in every block in this um, room. And they all just have fluorescent. That's awesome. Now, what I want to do is to plug this in. So all the gas pumps, they are turned on. Ooh, and look at that fresh oxygen and ah right i want to explain this but let's just follow the gas and see how they work because this is the first time i'm testing the system so excited Ooh, yeah 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 nice cool yes um the reason why there is a gas film right here is that if you look at this place right it's not very pressurized. Um, our oxygen, our duplicates were even having problems to breathe while they are, uh, they are in this uh, mini base. So this is sort of a hack. What you generally want to do is to have a gas bridge. If you still remember about the bridge and the priorities, right? The gas would try to pass through the bridge first. If it cannot, it will go through the vent if you connect them like this. Let's say this is the pipe going upwards. And where can I get my gas bridge? Yeah. So it will try to pass through regularly going through that. But if this is full, right? And if you give it another pipe right here, and if you give it a vent right there, it will try to go through that vent. So this way, we can always guarantee that the top part of our base is always pressurized before the lower parts of our uh, base is pressurized. Yeah, and this is a very short term, very sort of um, hacky workaround, or this is like a, uh, what you call that? This is the Band-Aid, yeah. And... Since that is working, let it run for a bit and uh, let's see, can I explain this thing good enough? Let's go into the materials overlay. So this is the gas material overlay. And here we have some polluted oxygen accumulated from the polluted water being off gassed, right? And this is airflow tile on top. It's a mesh tile with some water inside the mesh tile. So these polluted oxygen couldn't pass through because the liquid would block that, right? And now we have deodorizers. Something funny about the deodorizer is that, say if I build it up here, right, it can clean the air underneath, like two blocks underneath it as well, which is wonderful, which is how this whole thing works. So they can basically pull polluted oxygen pass through that water, even though the water is blocking it regularly. And that is why this whole room only has oxygen, but no polluted oxygen. So that's the first part. The second part is um, all these deodorizers, right? They require sand. And right now we have a big chunk of sand. Ooh, it's only 14 tons right now. It was 20 when they just started. But we have these um, conveyor chutes, we have the sand, if we need to feed more sand into it, we could do that by using this conveyor chute um, route. Ah, the conveyor rails. Yes, exactly. And 
this is what you already have seen. This is a power consumer module. Um, let's see. This is our main grid. It has zero watts. It should only have zero watts. What's that 30 watts doing? I'll find that out later. But anyway, so this is the main grid which have all our generators plugged in, right? And this is sort of an interface between one battery is charging, one battery is discharging. So it separates the um, power generators from the power consumers. And the power consumers gets their power through these two transformers. Um, this smaller power transformer, it powers all these deodorizers and probably these auto sweepers as well. However, the bigger one, the larger one, it powers all these gas pumps because there are six of them and each one consumes 240 watts. So that's in total 1440 watts power, which um, our regular wire couldn't bear that much. It will break eventually, right? And how's the pressurization going? Ooh, yes, I like that. I like that very much. Uh, I wish I could just like disable it. I really want to see this. I really want to see the air going through all our pipes and then making its way to the top and slowly make its way back down to the bottom. Yes, nice. See, there's no oxygen going out of these vents yet until it hits the very last one. And if this one overpressurized, right, this one would start to release oxygen. And so, like we just said, right, this is how you keep the whole base pressurized with oxygen. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's see, what kind of blueprint do we have? I'm gonna pick the suit and I'm gonna have a hard time trying to find that suit. Ooh, maybe not. Barney, Lily, how about our main character, Ted, getting something nicer. He's always the fancy one, you know, with all the blazers and actually, Barney is the one with always having the suit. Hmm. Anyway, let's have a look at our skills. They have a lot of skill points, but I haven't given them any yet because I feel like they don't really need them yet. So that's why I'm holding off on giving them new skills. With all that said, uh, looking at how much time we already have on this episode, I'm thinking, right, I'll probably cut it here and we'll come back to this next time. I truly, truly appreciate you watching this whole series and bearing with me learning how to do oxygen not included. Well, learning as slash kind of um, teaching ish. Yeah. And learning how to do uh, YouTube because YouTube is somewhat new to me. I have been a YouTube consumer for quite a while, but I have never been a YouTube generator, a generator. Yeah. So I hope you have a great day or a great night and uh, I will see you next time. Cool. Bye.